Hello and welcome back uh, to week number two, of Introduction to Children's Ministry. I uh, trust week one was uh, a positive experience for you. Uh, we should have four posts from you uh, concerning your assignments from week number one, and so I hope that's completed and we're moving on to uh, week number two. Uh, let me also remind you, in addition to the four posts that we will ask of you for this week, uh, I hope that you're making plans uh, and preparations for your project, uh, your interview project, which is due at the end of next week. Um, there are some interview questions that we're posted, uh, we've posted onto the uh, week two assignments, and so please download that and go ahead and identify at least which uh, church staff member uh, who's currently serving in children's ministry that you plan to interview contact that person and then schedule a time when you can interview them preferably in person but if not you certainly can do so by phone uh, we again will have those uh, due on the end of week number three today what I'd like to do is start to uh, project ahead and talk about some things that uh, first of all are included in your reading but also uh, we will ask of you uh, on the final exam and so even though these lectures over the next few weeks will not be long uh, I trust you'll take good notes and then that should help you immensely when it comes to asking you those exam questions uh, during week number seven I'd like to talk about culture culture uh, it seems every ten years changes immensely uh, I don't have to tell you that uh, children's ministry today is much different than when you were a child. It certainly is different than when I was a child, uh, many times over. One of the reasons why is because of technology. Technology overall uh, can be very positive. I certainly would not want to go back to uh, when we had to do things uh, on our own. I remember well that I didn't have my first cell phone until uh, I was married and my wife was expecting our first child and so I know that's probably hard for some of you to imagine how I survived and I think that sometimes myself but it did indeed happen uh, I did survive and these days our children are exposed to uh, lots of technology I think uh, one of the things that surprises me most about children's ministry is the fact that we now have to post a slide and make an announcement during our children's worship services for our children to put all of their electronic devices away. That is shocking to me because once again I didn't have a cell phone until very late uh, in life, in my life it seems, and now our second, third, fourth and fifth graders are bringing iPods, cell phones, uh, and other electronic devices with them to church. The devices themselves, uh, as you probably would agree, are not bad, but the access that that allows them to have to all types of cultural uh, input is certainly concerning. Uh, it's our job to help inform parents and make them aware of the need to filter and also to give guidelines uh, for making sure there's a limit on this exposure to technology and to be totally honest with you one of the things I have found is that parents are just ignorant, if you will, to creating a plan which will, number one, filter, and number two, uh, restrict uh, the use of these devices. I think we are currently experiencing a generation that is being raised by electronics. Um, screen kids is what I like to call them because if you were to add up their exposure to electronic devices each week, versus their interaction with people, uh, certainly their parents, 
I'm afraid the results would be shocking. Uh, one of the things that, that I encourage parents to do is to monitor their children and try to come up with uh, uh, a general estimate of uh, their children and their current exposure to uh, technology, whether that be uh, game systems, uh, handheld devices such as phones or iPods, and television and internet. The statistics are shocking as to how much time uh, not only children spend on these devices, but certainly the young people and adults as well. And so with all that's out there and the access that we have, uh, we need to be proactive and make sure that parents uh, can have the tools necessary to filter and to restrict this particular access. Um, I would encourage you to have a plan to talk with parents about this. Um, many times parents feel that since they're not engaged in the process of uh, technology like their children are, that everything's fine and nothing could be farther from the truth. Uh, please make that uh, toward the top of your agenda as you serve in children's ministry and make sure that uh, the exposure and the type of cultural input that your children are being exposed to isn't uh, presenting uh, really a major problem because one of the things that that I've experienced is that we put a lot of time into uh, presenting a, a positive children's worship experience uh, outreach opportunities and activities for our children uh, to give them uh, the right uh, training uh, and spiritual guidance but if uh, the if the scales are such that they're receiving uh, multiple times more input from other avenues, whether negative or simply secular, then our work is, is really almost negated. One of the issues that we constantly run into is uh, the accessibility that children now have to the internet. Uh, it's incredible the number of devices that can get on the internet, uh, the amount of Wi-Fi spots that are out there, and even though these children may not have uh, cell coverage, uh, they are smarter than we are many times in being able to access information and really don't think anything about it. Uh, parents have to stay ahead of this. Uh, we are literally parenting the internet generation uh, and I found an article that's entitled Parenting the Internet Generation. It's put out by Covenant Eyes, uh, a filtering uh, organization and resource. Um, and it's just been incredible to read some of the statistics about uh, the internet and how uh, it's just second nature for children these days to get access to it, uh, to navigate the web, uh, to find chat rooms, uh, to certainly be exposed to bullying uh, and also other forms of uh, the internet experience which certainly can be negative. A lot of cultural things out there uh, use the web as their uh, vehicle, uh, their avenue of communication, and so as parents we need to be aware uh, of that particular uh, danger, if you will. Uh, filters are there. Uh, there are many different types of filters that parents can uh, have access to. Net Nanny, um, MobiSip is a, a uh, filtering uh, device or should I say resource for uh, the mobile devices uh, Covenant Eyes there are just lots of things that are out there do your homework uh, be able to suggest to parents and even uh, walk them through uh, some 
some sample looks at what this uh, may look like and, and the benefits that we can have to uh, knowing uh, where our where our children uh, navigate and and the different sites and things that they are visiting. As we think about the accessibility to electronic devices and the opportunity to literally visit any place in the world right there as children uh, are on their device um, and they can experience so much, uh, including the social realm, one of the dangers, I would also argue, besides what they're exposed to and uh, the need to filter what they're exposed to, um, another potential danger is the amount of time uh, that this uh, takes and can uh, literally become uh, a substitute for true uh, social interaction. Uh, the statistics are incredible and I invite you to, to do some research and it won't take you long to find out that, that it can literally become a, a god uh, to those who are spending hour after hour uh, and almost have that phone or electronic device permanently attached uh, to their hand. Um, it's incredible to, to see some parodies of, of, uh, of families who, who uh, spend a meal together and their phones are all up beside of them or, or they're uh, you know, talking and texting and checking their social media outlets and then at the end of that meal together where they're spending some social time together uh, they put their phones in their pockets and say it was certainly nice to get together and talk um, that's quite funny but sadly it's often true and that's another reason why limiting uh, the time spent with this uh, social media approach I think can be very very positive Today's culture, and specifically technology, has also affected how we can minister to children. There are lots of tools that I use today that I didn't use 10, 20 years ago. I would encourage you to stay up on uh, the types of technology and uh, ways that, that you can uh, reach children. For instance, uh, many, many years ago, flannel graph VHS videos, uh, flip chart stories, and I'm not certainly being negative on any of those resources. Those were prevalent and popular ways to reach children. Today, uh, children uh, are drawn to things which are much more lively, uh, much more visual, and much more interactive. With that in mind, uh, Please stay on the cutting edge of curriculum uh, and resources that can draw kids to uh, the gospel that you're trying to teach, uh, the uh, material that needs to be covered. Having said that, uh, don't go so far to that extreme that you simply reach for that uh, curriculum or those resources that have the most bells and whistles because sadly uh, that isn't always uh, the best material uh, that's going to be the most meaty that's going to cover uh, and be doctrinally sound uh, as to what you're trying to convey to these children. There are some good things out there and I'll be totally honest with you there isn't much that I simply take and and rubber stamp. I try to do my homework and, and realize that um, most resources have a lot of good in them, but I need to adapt them based upon the children that I'm teaching to, uh, the cultural uh, angle that I'm hoping to teach from, um, and also uh, make sure that those particular resources as I teach them are doctrinally sound and don't just uh, omit negative things but also include those positive things that I'm wanting to teach uh, those children. So keep that in mind as you evaluate curriculum, uh, as you investigate uh, and create a diverse uh, 
resource uh, library and so that kids are uh, attracted to and can be drawn to what you're teaching and these can be tools to teach those as opposed to simply entertainment uh, which sometimes is indeed the case. Well we trust that you learned uh, a little from this brief lecture and hopefully it will sink to what you're reading and if nothing else cause you to be interested and engaged as to the culture uh, that we are currently immersed in. It uh, always makes me wonder what we're going to be talking about in 10-15 years. It's been amazing to see the change in culture and we somehow get the impression that we've arrived and things aren't going to change but we live in a constantly changing culture and that's why it's important to stay engaged to stay up to date, uh, to read, uh, to search, uh, to uh, be able to continually stay abreast of the culture uh, that our children are living in uh, and that children which will be born in the future will be born into. So please make that uh, an intention. Um, we need to be proactive in making sure that we are staying engaged. As we get older, we tend to slow down, and I even feel it uh, in my current age. But it's our duty, uh, regardless of our age, to stay engaged uh, and to be aware of those changes in culture, which will continue to uh, make us effective uh, in our ministry to children. So, without further ado, we'll close out week two lecture and encourage you to keep up with your reading, keep up with your posts, and we're anxious to uh, get you uh, started on your interviews, and uh, hopefully you'll do that soon, knowing that that first interview project is due at the end of week number three. Thank you so much, and if you need us for anything, just shoot us an email. Bye-bye.